Hi everyone, I'm just sharing my screen so hopefully uh, you can see this. Um, hello and, and welcome. Um, my name is Claire Simpson and I'm a Theatre Relationship Manager at Arts Council England. I'm a white woman in my 30s with shoulder length curly brown hair. I'm wearing a pale blue dress and brown glasses. I'm in a room with white walls and a black bookcase to my left. And joining me today is my colleague, Bryony. Bryony, do you want to say hello? Hi there. Um, so my name's Bryony Windsor and I'm a Visual Arts Relationship Manager for Arts Council. And I'm a white woman also in my 30s. Um, I've got shoulder length, straight brown hair. I'm wearing a navy blue dress and a yellow necklace and some jazzy glasses. And there are some prints on the wall behind me. So in this presentation today, we are going to tell you all about Arts Council England, and that includes who we are, our investment, our relationship managers, our funds, and our online application portal, Grantium. During the presentation, we'll be showing some simple PowerPoint slides with images and text. However, all of the information that's shown on the slides will also be said aloud, so you won't miss anything if you're not able to see them. As Alison mentioned, the session today is being recorded and all of the information shared in our presentation is correct as of today's date, the 16th of June 2021. Please always check on our website if you're looking to apply for a particular fund because details can be subject to change. As some of you might know, Arts Council England is the cultural development agency in England, and we do a number of things. We champion, develop and invest in artistic and cultural experiences that enrich people's lives. We support a range of work across the arts, museums and libraries. And we invest money in cultural experiences that everyone can enjoy. We have open access funding programmes that we're going to introduce to you today, as well as national portfolio organisations who receive funding for usually around a three to four year period to cover their core business plans. We also occasionally have one off strategic funding programmes which address particular priorities within the sector, such as capital funding for building projects or Elevate, uh, which supports diverse-led companies to develop their organisations. As you might be aware, last year we published Let's Create, our 10-year strategy from 2020 to 2030. By 2030, we want England to be a country in which the creativity of each of us is valued and given the chance to flourish, and where every one of us has access to a remarkable quality cultural experiences. Let's Create is the result of nearly two years of evidence gathering and consultation with people working in museums, libraries, arts organisations, the public, our stakeholders and our staff. The strategy centres around three outcomes which we'll work to deliver over the next decade. Those outcomes are on the screen just now. They are creative people, Everyone can develop and express creativity throughout their life. Cultural communities, villages, towns and cities thrive through a collaborative approach to culture. And a and cultural country, England's cultural sector is innovative, collaborative and international. To achieve these three outcomes, the Arts Council and the organisations and people that we invest in will need to adapt, steered by our four investment principles. Those are ambition and quality. Cultural organisations are ambitious and committed to improving the quality of their work. Inclusivity and relevance. England's diversity is fully reflected in the organisations and individuals that we support and the culture they produce. Dynamism, cultural organisations can thrive and are better able to respond to the challenges of the next decade. And environmental responsibility, cultural organisations lead the way in their approach to the climate emergency.
organisations will be able to deliver the outcomes and provide even greater benefit to the public. This year, we published our first delivery plan, which includes a set of priorities and detail about how we intend to deliver the strategy for the period 2021 to 23. On our website, you can read the full strategy document, including in audio, BSL, large print, braille and easy read formats, as well as some further background information about how we develop the strategy. So before giving you information about our funding programmes, we wanted to tell you about the types of access support that we can offer to address barriers that individuals and disabled led organisations might face when accessing our funding. Pre-application, this support can include providing our guidance in another format, such as BSL, Braille, Easy Read or Large Print. We can also pay for a support worker, so that might be someone like a note taker, um, interpreters, a personal assistant in a one to one meeting with us or someone to help scribe and complete the online application form. And we can also support BSL applications. If you have a support worker or a family or friend um, who is helping you, then they can claim a fee for their work to support you. If you don't have someone that you can already go to, we have several national portfolio organisations who can offer support. To find out more about either option, email our customer services team at inquiries at artscouncil.org.uk and add access information to the subject bar. Unfortunately, because of the current situation, we can't take telephone inquiries at the moment, but someone will try and get back to you within five working days. And the email address is on the next slide again. Um, so do bear with us. And the customer services team are really expert and used to hearing all sorts of inquiries. Um, for developing your creative practice, which Brian will talk about shortly, it's a shorter application form and therefore the access support that we can provide is a standard maximum cost of £600 for any access requirements. Most requests that we've had in the past tend to be no more than this amount, but if you do think that more is needed, you can talk to us about it. If we've already paid for some support before you submit an application and then you decide that you don't want to apply, you absolutely don't have to. We have a dedicated access support on our website, which is artscouncil.org.uk forward slash access. And on the website, as I said, you can find easy read versions of our access support guidance and the how to apply guidance for project grants and developing your creative practice. There's also our access support information sheets which go into detail about the ways in which we can help you and how support workers should be able to help you. We've also recently released audio versions of our eight most popular guidance documents, which again, you can access on the website. At the moment, British Sign Language guidance is available on demand. And if your preferred format isn't listed, you can get in touch with customer services and we'll do our best to help you. You can also include personal access costs in your application, which comes from a separate budget, so it won't affect the amount of funding that you're asking for to deliver your project or take it over the maximum threshold. Within your application, you should apply for any personal costs that you'll need to help you run your project if you were awarded a grant. So that might include things like a support worker or a BSL interpreter for any meetings, workshops or performances. Travel costs for meetings, workshops or performances if you have a physical disability or impairment. Or perhaps a support worker to help you manage your budget and use our online system. You can also apply for costs to make your work more accessible to the public, which can be included within your application. Those might include a British Sign Language interpreter for workshops or a performance, money for captioning performances, or a support worker to help disabled people who are attending a workshop. I will mention this again later, but it's useful to note that in project grants, 
access for your personal involvement in the project is listed separately in the budget to access which supports other people engage with the activity. So that's just an important distinction to remember. So on to project grants, which is the first uh, fund that we're going to talk about today. Project grants is our open access fund for new ideas, new talent and new approaches in the arts. It's always open and anyone can apply. We're one of the few arts funders that will support individuals, certainly for these amounts, and we're really proud of that. Without this funding programme, many artists would not be able to afford to continue their practice and conversations and skills would be lost. Arts organisations, collaborating groups, theatres, museums, art centres, libraries, etc. can apply. You don't need to be an artist to apply. You just need to be using the arts in your work. Activities must benefit people in England, either in the short term or the long term. And you can apply for between £1,000 and £100,000. If you do want to apply for more than £100,000, you'll need our permission to do that. The money comes from the National Lottery and all applications must be made online and we'll give you an overview of the questions that we ask shortly. We've implemented some changes to project grants in light of COVID-19. So until the end of August 2021, you don't need to have a minimum 10% match funding to apply to project grants. This is because we know how difficult it is at the moment to find additional financial support. So if you don't have match funding or you have less than 10%, you will still be able to submit your application. If you do have some match funding, you should definitely still tell us about that in your project budget. When it comes to making decisions, we'll take the difficulty of securing other funding at the moment into account. All libraries can apply to project grants for new creative and cultural projects that focus on any of the disciplines that come under the Arts Council's remit, for example, literature, visual arts, theatre, music, dance, combined arts. Organisations can also now apply to project grants for subject specialist network activity that benefits accredited museums. This type of network, also known as an SSN, shares knowledge, expertise and resources with people working with museums collections. Most projects that we fund fall into one of these categories or sometimes more than one. Uh, dance, literature, music, accredited museums, theatre, visual arts, combined arts. And combined arts can mean many things. It might be a combination of other art forms or it can also be used to describe festivals, carnivals and other types of celebration projects that explore new technologies in the arts or museums and libraries, for example. Your project will probably fall somewhere within this circle, within this group of art forms. But if it doesn't, don't worry. Um, if you're not sure, you can get in touch with us with customer services again, and we'll let you know if it's the sort of thing that we can fund. So I'm going to go through some of the things that you can apply for. They might include doing research for a new project, so talking to people and finding out about places, themes or other research that will inform a piece of work that you want to do in the future. In this case, we'd want to see that this might reach people in the long term. So you can do this by showing us your track record or by confirmed partners who will show or publish the work. You can apply to make new work. This might be writing a play or a book choreographing a show or putting on a production. Events such as gigs, plays, concerts, performances. Workshops and learning opportunities. You might run a workshop to pass your skills on in dance or writing, etc. to people who want to learn. Or you might also attend a workshop as part of a wider project so that you can get better at what you do. And we also fund touring work. So taking a play, a workshop, an exhibition, a gig around an area or even the country. 
There are some things that we can't fund, which includes work that won't reach people in England. So either in the short term or the long term. You can apply for reach research or to write a book, for example, as long as you can show that people will see, hear, read or experience it in some way in the future and that most of the people experiencing it will be based in England. We can't fund things that have already happened or that will happen before we can make a decision. It's really important to remember that if you're applying for £15,000 or under, we'll give you a decision within 10 weeks. And if you're applying for over £15,000, it will take up to 16 weeks. So make sure you bear those timescales in mind when you're working out the delivery dates of your project. School or uni university courses. You can apply if you're a student or a researcher or a school or a university, but we can't fund anything that should be covered as part of an accredited course or the national curriculum. You'll have to show that your project is extra or separate from your course of study. We can't support business running costs. This fund is called Project Grants and it's for standalone one-off projects that have a clear start and end date. And finally, we can't fund cinema or fashion. There are other organisations that cover these kinds of things like the British Film Institute or the Fashion Council. We can support artists or museums that use video as a way of reaching people, for example, but cinema as an art form itself is not part of our remit. And finally, just to briefly outline the application form for project grants. As I mentioned before, it's an online application system called Grantium, and you will be asked to complete information about four main parts within the application form. Quality, that's where you have to tell us about you and your project. Public engagement is about reaching people. Finance is the budget. So although you don't need match funding, if you do have some, you'll need to tell us in this section where the rest of the money is coming from and what the project expenditure is. And management is about making it happen. And it's worth remembering that the amount and type of information that we ask you for is dependent on how much money you apply for. So the more money you ask us for, the more information we will ask you for. Hi, it's Bryony speaking now, and I'm going to give you a short overview of developing your creative practice. We call this DYCP for short. This program is highly competitive, but truly transformative. It's about you telling us how you will develop. This is your opportunity to dictate, to dictate the parameters of your own development. So grants can be between two and 10,000 pounds a year. And unlike project grants, which is open all year round, DYCP has four rounds a year. Round 11 will open for applications on the 5th of August, 2021. We always publish the dates on our website. Due to the exceptionally high demand, we have had to make some changes to the DYCP eligibility criteria. It's worth reading through this on our website if you've made two unsuccessful or one successful application since the 17th of April, 2019, as you won't be eligible to apply in round 11 we will keep this criteria under constant review. Individuals and small groups can apply. This fund isn't just for artists, it's for anyone with a creative practice, which includes curators, producers, choreographers, etc. It's about personal development. It's not about project development or creating your next piece of work. That kind of application would probably be eligible, but it wouldn't be a good fit for the programme and we'd be unlikely to fund it as the competition is so high. If you're looking at a project, then project grants is, is where to go. The best applications are those that focus on developing your creative practice, your skills, knowledge, networks, etc. This means we're not looking for any public facing work. As a result of these grants, it's all about you, so be selfish. 
the crux of the fund is why why this opportunity and why now and the application form is geared up to tell you how to do this read the guidance for full details on how to answer each question i'll go through them shortly essentially this is about you getting from a to b those that are successful will be able to demonstrate a change in the quality of their work so it won't necessarily be the best artists it will be artists that demonstrate that the grant will be transformative in changing their practice. Think about what you want to do, how it will be different or better at the end of the development compared with what you do now. So I'll briefly talk about what you can apply for. So there's a few bullet points on the screen, but I'm going to go through them as well. So artists, curators, producers, etc., anyone who has a creative practice, can apply for a period of self-directed research. This fund isn't about us setting up restrictive parameters. It's about you telling us as the applicant what you want to do and how that will progress your practice. Our guidance helps you to articulate that. And we've created a straightforward application form that focuses on quality. All we really want to know from applicants is why and how this timely intervention would make a significant difference to your practice. It's not only a priority for us to fund artists who are already making high quality work, although this is important, or, to, or people who write good applications. It's the people who make a really who have demonstrated that this funding will make a really big difference at this particular point in their career, who are more likely to get funding. Notice that we're interest, interested in funding international work through this fund, where possible, obviously, and within line with government guidelines. Uh, we understand how crucial international working or research trips travel can be. You can now apply for activities that consider the impact of COVID-19 on your practice, such as making your practice more sustainable or developing new ways of working, including digital and socially distanced. The things you can't apply for. One thing we, we regularly see at DYCP is that the grant might have been more suited to project grants which is what Claire's just spoken about. So an example of that might be research and development for a project that will become a live show or time to write a new book or play. We understand that making new work can be a vital part of creative development, but if you're applying for a grant to realise your next project and it isn't part of your creative development, sort of that's the focus, then it, will be, it won't be considered as strong and it will be less competitive and you'd be better applying to project grants. A lot of applicants apply for time out of, to work on the kind of work that they normally do. The fund is also not about that. It's about making the most of the opportunity to improve your abilities or networks. Like project grants, we can't cover university or college fees, but you can include other kind of courses though. If you want to go on a course or a residency, you should explain why this is the right one for you, what you'll get out of it in, in relation to developing your creative practice. We've also had a lot of applications for film. Similar to Project Grants and Cinema, there's a grey area here. So we can fund film as a medium for a visual artist or a poet, for example, to deliver their work and reach audiences. But a two hour period drama, for example, doesn't fall under the remit of the Arts Council. The fund unfortunately does not cover loss of earnings due to COVID-19 or any other factors. It's also important to remember that all costs covered by the grant should take place after our decision has been made. So again, please bear the timescales of our decisions in mind when you're working on your activity plan. So on to the positives. <laughs> the application form is much shorter than project grants. It's a smaller grant and therefore we ask less questions. It includes three written questions, two attachments and three checkbox options, a budget and an activity plan. This slide shows you the questions. In the interest of accessibility, I'll quickly read the questions which are also on the slide. So question one, tell us about your yourself and your creative practice. This is what you do and your track record. Tell us about how the development opportunity you want to undertake, what you'll get out of it and how you'll go about it. So this is question two, and this is about the, the crux of what you're asking us for the funding for. And then question three is why is this important for your practice at this point in time and how will it create future opportunities? You'll have around 
uh, 15,000 characters to write your answers, including spaces and punctuation. Remember for this fund and for project grants that Word tends to be more generous with character count than our online system Grantium. So make sure you're under that character count and keep your answers as concise as possible. So with developing your creative practice, you can add um, an attachment. This might be an example of your work or a supporting document. The attachment should add value to the application and demonstrate both the quality of your work and that you're at the right point in your career to really benefit from a period of development. The checkbox questions are not used in decision making. They're to help us to report on how our funding is used. So remember, immediate public benefit is not required in developing your creative practice. There is no requirement for you to have much funding or for your project to generate income. So you only need to provide an expenditure budget. You'll also need to complete an activity plan which sets out the timeline for various activities within your project. To improve your application, please remember to focus on your experience and what you will get out of it rather than making new work or providing public benefit. Tell us what you'll do as well as why. One of the things we come across is that some applicants don't, they say exactly what they're going to do, but not what the project is about or how it will develop their, their career. Um, others is the other way around. So make sure you include detail in your activity plan. For example, milestones, the meetings, the travel, the classes, the time to practice that you've laid out in your application. Seek out new opportunities and new partnerships with developing your creative practice and think about how you'll be able to do better or differently as a result of this funding. Finally, in terms of our funding packages, we just wanted to alert you to um, a capital fund, really, that is separate to project grants and developing your creative practice. This is called the Cultural Investment Fund, and it's investment by the, cult, the Department for Digital Culture, Media and Sport, which is administered by Arts Council England. It's a package of three capital funds made up of the Cultural Development Fund, which aims to invest in transformative place-based creative and cultural initiatives. Those eligible are local partnerships led by local authority, local enterprise partnerships, or another appropriate body. The Museums and Estate, the Museums Estate and Development Fund. This is for museums to undertake vital infrastructure and urgent maintenance backlogs. Those eligibles are non-national museums that are accredited and local authorities that look after museums. And the Libraries Improvement Fund. The aim of this fund is to enable library services across England to invest in a range of projects to upgrade buildings and technology so they are in a better place to serve their users. A lead applicant must be a local authority. Each of these funds has its own eligibility and requirements. So do visit our website if you think any of these might be of interest. And again, you can always contact our customer services team. Finally, we're putting up the links to our website, um, our customer services and myself and Claire as relationship managers. Um, so our website should be the first point of call for all applicants. Um, almost every question that you have is answered in the guidance um, and there is a step-by-step -step how to apply guide. Um, it explains the aims of both of the programmes that we've just spoken to, what type of activity we can support and the difference between both of our funds. We also have information sheets on project grants on our website to further help with planning your project and advice on certain types of activities. Our customer services team are also a great point of contact for in-person advice. Um, as we've explained earlier, this is done by email at the moment, um, but they can advise on eligibility, discuss parts of applications that you're unsure about, um, talk you through how to use our online application form and our portal Grantium. Uh, sometimes they may pass your inquiry on to a relationship manager like myself and Claire, um, and we'll speak directly with you. Uh, relationship managers, uh, that is Claire and I, um, we have over 10,000 applicants to project grants every year, so it's impossible for us to speak to everyone. So it's great uh, that Alison set up a funding fair and we can come along and speak directly to you. Um, but our support one-to-one uh, -one is limited, um, but we have popped our um, details on the 
slide um, and if anyone has any access uh, needs then please um, pop a, a private message in the chat and we will send you our details um, and we also have a, um, a quiz that you can do before you apply um, it's a really short easy online quiz and it basically uh, sees whether you're ready so are you eligible do you have all of the information in place um, is the timing right is your activity well planned so these things can be really useful tools um, just to start you thinking about your project. Um, so that's a very basic introduction to the Arts Council and some of our funding programmes. Thank you very much for listening to Claire and I, um, and we will now take any questions. Um, I think that I'm not seeing anything currently in the chat, but I think we have a question from Pratima. Um, I, I don't know if you, you oh yeah. Okay. Thanks, Alison, and Brian. Oh, okay. Thank you for that presentation. Um, I just want to make a bit of a general observation, um, just to say that there's a. I think the experience is that it's notoriously difficult to get arts council funding, so I just wanted to kind of sense a real realism check, really, about what other kind of you know chances of any bid. You know what? What's your is that sometimes one in 10 chance, whatever. So it's a kind of more general point. And also, um, I know other funders are doing specific provision for black communities and whether that's been considered and how you look at those applications. And again, that's where I'm coming from in terms of black organizations not being geared up to necessarily be in a place where they can apply in the way that you're suggesting in, in terms of what's required. So if you can answer those, please. Yeah, Bryony, do you want to take this on or shall I? Yeah, happy to. Yeah, so um, pre prior to COVID-19, we would um, probably have included in that presentation um, our funding sort of percentages. So for project grants, it was around 40 to 50%. Um, developing your creative practice was around 10 or 20 as a response to COVID-19, we've put uh, millions more into developing your creative practice to increase that percentage. Um, and we have only just closed around, um, so we don't have those, those figures, but we've put in, um, I think it's like 17 million or it, it's a lot of money. Yeah, 18 million. 18 yeah. million. So because we were aware of the uh, A, of the demand and B, the challenges that freelancers are facing. We are one of the only funders who've remained open for project based activity. So a lot of people have diverted their funds to to the COVID emergency. And indeed, we did that as well uh, last year. So it does mean that there is a lot more demand. Um, but just to sort of reassure you, we are like we've done with uh, developing your creative practice. We're working with our budgets um, to make sure that people aren't disadvantaged by that um, by that increase. So project grants, I think, is remaining in a similar in a similar ballpark, but it is fair to say that um, you know you have to be ready to apply and maybe ready to get a rejection as as much as get a um, the funding. And we very much see that as a development agency that that it's part of our role to give feedback on applications that were unsuccessful, particularly with project grants. So you would get a tailored statement saying you know, we would like more information on this and this. And it's very much an open door. So we totally understand the amount of time that it's taken for somebody to write an application and we want them to be able to strengthen that and come back in where appropriate. Um, in terms of provision for uh, Black, Asian or ethnically diverse um, artists, organisations, creatives, um, we have launched our inclusivity and relevance uh, investment principle um, which is playing a key part in our funding decisions so we in terms of our support we will prioritize those applicants for a one-to-one -one conversation with a relationship manager to make sure that if there are barriers or um, you need you know you want that one-to-one -one conversation about how to write a strong application that's who we're here for also disabled led organizations or disabled applicants will be prioritized for one-to-one -one advice 
Um, and I think we've publicly kind of said, you know, there's a, there's a journey that the Arts Council and the sector is going on to make our funding more equitable. Um, and so that's something that, you know, we, we want to have an open dialogue about. Um, I hope that answers the question. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Um, we have a question in the chat. Um, thank you for the presentation. I wondered whether you considered funding a project using music therapy as the creative medium. Um, yes, as far as I'm aware, we would. Um, is that your understanding, Bryony, that, um, that we would? I think as long as it's using um, the arts and it's engaging people um, in England, I think we're very interested in arts and health and well-being projects. And that's something that you'll probably see us being more interested in as we move to uh, to working with Let's Create in a more meaningful way through project grants. Um, what we don't, we don't primarily fund health um, projects though. So it's worth making sure that you get that balance right, that it is still an arts project. It's not purely um, for a health or well-being benefit, but it might have some health and well-being outcomes. Um, and it might be that you're particularly looking to, um, to engage uh, a group of individuals or a community who might be less likely to engage in arts practice, for example, and music therapy might be a way of, um, of introducing them to to art and culture or engaging them with art and culture. So um, I think it it sort of depends on the, the type, the detail of the project, but in principle, those sorts of things probably would be eligible. Uh, you just need to make sure it's an arts project. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't think we've got anything. Oh, um, Lisa has a couple of questions. Yes, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and ask them. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. I'm, I'm, I'm actually wearing a couple of hats today. So I've got, I'm sort of asking questions uh, for myself as an artist, but also as somebody who runs a, I run a course for theatre makers and I also mentor um, emerging artists. Um, so my sort of questions for me really are, um, can I and how can I invite maybe some a relationship manager to I've just received some Arts Council funding and I'm putting on a performance in Northampton. Um, is it possible for me to invite somebody from ACE to come and see the work and if, if what's the protocol for for doing that. I have got a few more questions. <laughs> yeah, I'll take that one. So, yeah, the, the best way usually is, um, I mean, Claire and I put, have put our uh, details um, in these slides anyway, but if you didn't have a direct contact um, or you wanted to kind of cast the net wider, then we do channel everything through inquiries and it will get to us. Um, it'll be sent through our operations team and then all of our relationship managers would get um, the invite. Um, at the moment, it's worth saying that we are... Um, obviously working under COVID restrictions. <laughs> so um, if it's a physical uh, uh, event, you know, we would have to, to look at that. But do invite us, you know, um, if anybody does um, have an ACE funded project, we're really interested in following that up um, and seeing the work where we can or being aware of it, you know, having it on our radar. So yes, do, do either email inquiries or email us directly. Okay. And then... And just to I was just going to add to that, sorry, Lisa, that um, you can also add, uh, like if you're using social media, feel free to tag the Arts Council or Ace Midlands in any of your posts, because we, you know, we want to spread the word that our funding is is reaching people as well and, and to get a good example of the breadth of activities that are funded by us. Yeah, that's great. And the other questions I've got are for my my little, my little project is so I guess the questions that I would ask on their behalf are things like when you apply for project grants there is a location that you have to give is that your sort of official office or your home location or is that would they if you were delivering it in a different uh, area to where you lived would you put that as the location yeah, so you so the location, the application form will ask you the location of where the activity is taking place. And then but you will also be asked to provide your own 
contact details and your personal location. So you might live in Northampton and you would you would apply as yourself with your Northampton address, but maybe all of the work is taking place in Kettering, for example. So you can just you can you will you can say that in um, in the location section. And if your project is touring, you could there's a box to check to say that it's touring, and then you can list all of the different locations that it's going to. Okay. I think that also helps some some emerging artists who maybe live somewhere for financial reasons, but maybe deliver work in other in other places. And then, um, blah, blah. yeah, just just about how do you build up a relationship? Like especially especially if you're a, a new artist or you've just graduated and you don't really have that kind of body of work behind you. What would your advice be for people who are really just starting? I think try to engage with as many local networks as you can for other artists. There are some really excellent, uh, particularly for theatre makers, um, some great networks in the Midlands. Um, so there's the East Meets West network run by Little Earthquake. There's In Good Company. Um, there are organisations like Dash Arts, for example. They are... Um, they're brilliant at kind of bringing lots of different artists together and sharing advice and helping to kind of um, dispel some of the myths around Arts Council funding that, that we try to also dispel ourselves, but sometimes it helps to hear from someone else. Um, but if you've got events that you're running, um, we're always really happy to come and speak at events like this, for example, or if you're working with a group of emerging artists or a group of students, um, we're really happy to come and do kind of presentations or surgeries um, or again as Bryony says get in touch with customer services and if you're interested in a developmental conversation um, then we can we can pick that up they'll pass it on the first port of call is always the website for the guidance but then once provided someone's looked at that and has very specific questions then we can provide some support great thank you thanks very much Um, had anybody else got any questions for Bryony or Claire at all? I'm thinking that's no, but you have their emails, which is uh, a thing to have, really. <laughs> um, so I think in that case, I'm going to draw the session to a close.